Welcome to this webinar introducing i2 Costex 7.0, the latest evolution of the Costex platform. i2 Costex 7.0 is now available and offers a host of improvements such as updated Revit and IFC file support, enhancements to zones, as well as dimension group variables, the ability to automatically assign a random positive or negative color to each dimension group, new samples and templates, which can be downloaded from RIB Tech Web, and a host of general usability and system enhancements. This webinar will take you through examples of these changes, starting with improved support for Revit files. i2 Costax 7.0 now supports Revit 2021 and 2022 formats out of the box. IFC files can now show wireframe geometry have improvements for additional IFC entities and improved colors. Enhancements to zones now allow you to set default zones for drawing by using the new zones tab in the drawing properties. The zones tab is enabled when there are zones in the current building and only show the zone categories that contain zones. You can select a zone from each zone category as the default zone for the drawing. Fields in the zone selection bar above the drawing window will default to the selection made here each time you open the drawing. When measuring from the drawing, it is possible to select a zone other than the default zone from any zone category in the zone selection bar. However, Zone categories in the zone selection bar will be restored to their defaults if the drawing is closed and reopened. If it is desired to prevent a default zone from being changed, click the padlock button to its right and the zone category will be locked in both the drawing properties and zone selection bar. All dimensions on the drawing will be locked to this default zone. If any existing dimension on the drawing used a different zone, the dimension will be updated to use the selected default zone. If you do not wish to set a default zone on the drawing for a certain zone category, select Do not change from the zone category in the zones tab. In earlier versions of i2 Costax, zones were added at the project level using the Zones tab in the project properties. This has been moved to the building level. You can now use the new Zones tab in building properties to set the zones list for a building. The zones of a building will travel with the building when you import and export. As before, you can quickly access the zones list by clicking the Edit Zones button on the Dimensions ribbon. The Edit Zones button now opens the Zones tab of Building Properties instead of Project Properties. The zones that were added to a project using previous versions of i2 Costex will be automatically moved to the building level when you upgrade to 7.0. The upgrade process will copy all existing zones in a project to each building in the project. This may result in some buildings containing many zones that are not used in the building. No problem, however, as you can clean up and delete all unused zones in a building at once by using the new Delete All Unused Zones option. In this version, zones now have a new mandatory description field. As zones set up in previous versions of i2 Costex did not have a description field, when upgrading, i2 Costex will automatically populate the description field with the zone name, which you can then edit. The Dimensions Group tab in the Workbooks drag and drop window now provides the ability to filter dimension groups by zones. Let's have a look at how this works with our functional area takeoff. Taking note of the 115 square meters measured in administration, for example. Expanding the filter tab shows the zone categories that contain zones for the current building. To filter the dimension group list by zones, select the required zone from each zone category. Notice that the list is now filtered to show only the dimension groups that contain dimensions from the specified zones and their associated quantities. Dragging an item into my workbook now has the zone specified as per my filter selection and will only pull out those quantities. 
Moving on to variables, there is a new scope field in the dimension group variable properties which determines whether the value of a variable can be set on a per dimension group or a per dimension basis. If the scope field of a variable is selected as set per dimension, a default value for the variable can be set using the variables tab in the dimension group properties. For instance, selecting 20 MPA as a default. Let's do some takeoff. As I proceed, the dimension group will now use this variable value, though we can adjust it on the fly if necessary, and take off these 2000 by 2000 pad footings. If we return to the dimension group properties and set the scope field of our variable to set on dimension group and now select 30 MPA and then continue with our takeoff, the variable will not appear in the variables tab in the dimension properties as the 30 MPA variable setting now reflects all takeoff for this dimension group. Note that variables with different scope settings can be differentiated quickly by the icon at the right end of each variable. Long variable name issues have also been improved such that names and associated variable values are properly justified and much easier to read than in the previous version. In workbooks, a new custom function can now be used to establish live links to values of variables whose scope is set on dimension group. In addition to the existing xvar function, you can now also use xTextVar or xNumberVar to reference a variable when constructing expressions in the dimension group expression editor. xTextVar always returns the value of a variable as text, whereas xNumberVar always returns the value of a variable as a number. This is particularly useful in situations where xVar will return the result of a variable as a number rather than text, which could give unexpected results if you are trying to compare the text value in an if statement. When it comes to importing standard variables from CSVs, with added support for the scope field, the CSV import format for standard variables has been updated. You now need to specify the scope for each variable in the seventh column, either as dimension or dimension group. Let's now move on to some of the usability enhancements. A new search function has been added to the buildings list, allowing you to easily locate the required building when you want to open, copy, delete, or export a building. To search for a building, simply enter the text you want to search for in the new search field. As you enter text in the field, i 2 costx will look across the columns in the buildings list from left to right and filter the list to show only matching buildings. Next, we'll cover a few enhancements to dimension groups and takeoff. When copying a dimension group, you can choose whether to copy over the quantities in the dimension group. If the copy dimensions box is unchecked, only properties of the selected dimension group will be copied and the dimensions within it will not be carried over to the new dimension group. When specifying the number of decimal places to display for quantities in the dimensions group list window, it is now possible to select up to four decimal places. Previously, when creating a dimension group, positive and negative dimensions in the dimension group defaulted to the colors selected in the drawings tab of i 2 costx options, but can now be randomized for the creation of each new dimension group. As a note, when you import dimension groups from BIM models or CSV files, when this option is enabled, each imported dimension group will be automatically assigned a different positive or negative color. Color icons in the dimensions group list window are now turned on by default, making it easy to see what color, hatching pattern, and count symbol are used for each dimension group. You can now expand or collapse all dimension group folders in the dimension group list window at once by using the new expand all or collapse all option in the context menu. Rebar takeoff now uses a dashed line to represent the distance that bars are placed over to help differentiate it from the line that represents the length of the bars. Let's now cover some enhancements to workbooks. In earlier versions of i2 Costex, you had to scroll through the font list to locate the font you wanted to use when formatting text in a workbook. To make font selection easier and more efficient, we have introduced several improvements in this release. You can now look for a font by simply typing the first few characters of the font you want in the font drop-down field, and then 
The first matched item in the font list will be automatically highlighted. The font list now also shows the most recently used fonts and a preview of the currently selected font. In version 6.9, the references report showed quantity as per the measurement type rather than the default display as set by the user. Now, i 2 costex shows the default display of the dimension group quantity, allowing you to more easily locate the dimension group from the dimension groups list. The X get length breakdown function, which returns a list showing the count of each unique length, could only be added to a workbook by manually typing it into a cell. It is useful, for instance, in getting the number of each unique length of these beams in this steel canopy. It is now possible to insert this live length function by using the function button on the workbook's ribbon. In code libraries, it is now possible to move an entire branch of codes to a different parent in the code library hierarchy. To do this, enter your code library properties and double click the branch you choose to move to bring up the code properties dialog, and then use the drop down arrow of the parent field to select a new parent from the hierarchy. Rate libraries have also been optimized. Previously, when updating a rate library from CSV and system administration, you were only allowed to add new rates or update existing rates. Therefore, rate items that were obsolete would be left in the library. Observe these 19 items in my current rate library, for instance. There is now an option to delete existing rates, which no longer exist in an updated library CSV file. Let's now perform this update, and you will see that those items that did not exist in my CSV update were removed. In addition, i 2 costex has significantly improved performance when working with large rate libraries. Let's now cover some enhancements to i 2 costex server. When connecting to i 2 costex server, it is now possible to select from a list of servers that you have connected to before. To switch to a different server, simply click the drop-down arrow of the server field and select the required server from the list. When it comes to user management, we can now harness the user importer tool, which can be used to bulk import users from an Excel file into i 2 costex server admin. It can be found under the i 2 costex server installation directory. As you can see, we only have two users presently. Let's perform a bulk import with the tool now. Logging into our server admin, we can see the users we just added as well as a new user code column, which allows you to see at a glance what codes have been used for existing users. The user interface has now been updated to allow samples and template files for each region to be downloaded directly from i 2 costax from within the system administration area, linking right to the Tech Web Resource Center. Cutouts in an area dimension are now maintained when the dimension is joined with another area dimension using the quick point method. And finally, i 2 cost Excel now supports Excel 2021. The full list of new features is available in the release notes for download from our website. And if you're a client under maintenance, you can download i 2 costex 7.0 now at no extra charge by visiting techweb.rib-international.com. We hope that you found this webinar both enjoyable and informative. If you have any comments or would like to know more, then please don't hesitate to use the contact page of our website.